And when it comes to something like uh, diabetes, um, how does diabetes happen and what are ways that we can type two diabetes? How does type two diabetes happen and what are some ways that we can help combat it or um, maybe help get our blood sugars uh, regulated? Yeah. So diabetes is basically defined by chronically high blood sugar, but that doesn't get, and as a result, people will say we've become insulin resistant. You know, the insulin is no longer able to pull the glucose from the blood into the tissues so that it can be used, but that's not getting at what's going on underneath, which really comes back to what we were just talking about here, which is what we see in, in diabetes and insulin resistance. If you zoom in on, let's say the, the muscles, they aren't effectively converting the glucose to energy. So they're, the glucose is building up in the muscles. First, it gets stored as glycogen, but then there's just a lot of glucose there and it's not getting converted to energy. And so as a result, even if you have a lot of insulin, there's no more, like, there's no place available to put the glucose and you start to see the glucose uh, increase in the blood. You start to see a high blood sugar. And as a result of the blocked glucose metabolism, you start to see the whole body shift toward fat metabolism. And you also start to see the increase in stress hormones which are really well characterized in, in diabetes. And you see increased free fatty acids as well, this, this increase in lipolysis, because the body's basically in an alarm state. It's, it knows it has the fuel there, but it can't use it. And so it's still left without energy. So it's producing stress hormones. Glucagon is the most prominent one that's elevated in diabetes, but you also see increased adrenaline and cortisol too. And so the body's saying, I have this fuel, I can't use it. I don't have enough energy. The alarm bells ring, it increases the stress hormones and we produce free fatty acids and shift toward fat burning, which further blocks the glucose metabolism. So we get into this feed forward cycle where we're not able to use the carbs that we're eating and we're operating at just low efficiency. And, um, and then over time, you know, we start to see problems develop. So if we reverse that or in order to reverse that, we have to fix the glucose metabolism issue and we kind of have to reverse the whole process. We have to lower the stress hormones lower the free fatty acids and fix whatever is blocking our ability to metabolize the glucose in the first place. And I don't think this was really an issue historically. I mean, when we look at native cultures in modern day, and when we look back, you know, people were eating carbohydrates without an issue. But when we see the introduction of heavily processed foods with a lot of polyunsaturated fats, a lot of things that are irritating our intestines, you know, poorly uh, prepared grains, um, relying on, on a lot of vegetation you know, and beans and legumes, things that I think are really likely to cause gut problems, really likely to cause nutrient deficiencies, uh, really likely to, through multiple mechanisms, interfere with the mitochondria. We also see the introduction of pesticides. We see the introduction of a ton of stress to the average lifestyle. And all of a sudden, we're seeing you know, insulin resistance skyrocket. So I, I think those are the things that we want to be looking to that are Pro, that are blocking the glucose metabolism in the first place. And we want to fix that. We don't want to just avoid the carbs and say that we, f we fixed the issue. My glucose isn't high anymore in the blood. We haven't actually resolved the problem, right? We haven't actually fixed the, the metabolic underpinnings of insulin resistance and diabetes. Is uh, the introduction of some sugars like a, a decent route for someone to go, uh, for someone to look into to try to fix their glucose metabolism? I think it's a necessary part, but if we just took someone on an average diet, right? Like in the Western world, and we just added sugar on top, I don't think we're getting anywhere at solving the issue. Right. And I know that's not what you're suggesting either, but I do think a lot of people look at the average Western diet and they say, Hey, there's sugar in there, right? They're, they're eating candy. Don't worry. They're eating uh, Coke or drinking Coke, you know? Um, and, and so, yeah, that, I don't think that's going to be the solution, but avoiding carbs definitely isn't going to fix it. And bringing those carbs in is going to be really important for bringing the stress hormones down, bringing the free fatty acids down, upregulating thyroid activity, you know, getting our metabolic rate back up um, alongside fixing those underlying problems. I do think if we're throwing a lot of carbs at it and not also looking at other things that might be uh, contributing here, we could be missing um, some other factors that are blocking our glucose metabolism and we might see some continued issues. Do you think something like sugar fasting is something that could potentially help somebody that has type two diabetes? Yeah. So, I mean, there's great research showing that very low fat and even very low protein diets can make an incredible difference for people who have type two diabetes. 
I mean, in, in weeks time, you see people getting off of insulin, you see people getting off of other drugs that they're using to manage their blood sugar. I mean, it's, it's pretty astounding to, to see that in the literature. And then especially when you have people saying carbohydrates cause diabetes, I mean, those things are, are very clearly at odds with each other. Um, so there's, there's certainly something to it. And I think those are probably the people who are going to benefit the most from something like the sugar diet is the people who have the worst insulin resistance. And I do think it can be a way to kickstart the carb utilization, drop the free fatty acids, and even lower the amino acids a little bit, which do seem to be high in people with type two diabetes. And it, the high levels of BCAAs in the blood do seem to interfere a bit with insulin resistance. So I think that those are the people who will benefit the most um, and probably will see the fewest side effects of going lower on the fat and lower on the protein. And they see that too in those studies where they seem to still be in positive nitrogen balance and you know, seem to be having a lot of benefits to body fat as well, you know, like losing weight. But I think, yeah, so I think those people have the most to gain from the diets and probably will get the most relative benefits compared to someone who's already pretty insulin sensitive. What are some of the, what, what sucks about the sugar diet?